much. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from a reporter at Business Week Online, and she wanted me to answer a question uh, for a story she was working on. The question was, are entrepreneurs born, or can entrepreneurship be taught? And uh, I dashed off uh, like an 80-word answer, uh, essentially saying uh, that entrepreneurship could be taught, uh, that everyone I know and have ever known uh, has at one time or another had some dream of starting a business, creating a consumer product or a service and uh, becoming part of the world and, and making money at it. Uh, some people do it and, and some people don't. Uh, as Bruce said, over the last 25 years, there are a lot more schools around the country, uh, undergraduate and graduate, uh, with entrepreneurship programs, and uh, I believe that by studying the um, uh, experience of, of entrepreneurs and, and um, looking at case studies that you can indeed uh, become an entrepreneur. Uh, but it was kind of interesting, uh, there were other people who answered, other entrepreneurs and, uh, and academics who answered the opposite way. They said some people are risk averse, and some people like taking risks. And I have to admit, uh, looking at my own life, I, I guess I would uh, fall into the latter category. Um, before I started uh, Brooklyn Brewery, I was a journalist uh, for 15 years, and uh, six of those were in the Middle East, uh, two, three in Beirut, three in Cairo. So I covered uh, all sorts of exciting and uh, dangerous stories like the Iranian Revolution, uh, the fall of the Shah, the hostage crisis in Tehran, uh, the Iran-Iraq War I covered from, with the Iraqi army. And I lived in Beirut where we had the civil war on a daily basis. That was the most dangerous story I ever covered. Um, and we had the Israeli invasion, the massacres in the refugee camps. Uh, I was there for all that. Then I moved to Cairo, and I got there just in time to be sitting behind President Sadat, and he got assassinated at the parade. Uh, so I tend to be around when things like this happen, but you know, uh, this feels pretty secure to me, so I, I don't think we have anything to worry about. Um, during those years, we were fond of uh, quoting Winston Churchill as saying, there's nothing quite so exhilarating as being shot at without an effect. Uh, we, we learned the truth of that. Uh, I gave up uh, war corresponding uh, uh, at the wishes of my wife and came back to New York uh, and uh, eventually uh, uh, took up mountain climbing. Uh, so, you know, uh, although my answer was that entrepreneurs can be taught, uh, I, I definitely uh, understand the other side of that argument. There's an interesting article in the current uh, Appalachian Mountain Club uh, magazine about risk and taking risk. And the magazine notes recent discoveries about DNA showing that extreme risk takers display a change in the DRD4 gene, the dopamine receptor gene. Theory is if you have this mutation, you're more likely to do risky things. Dopamine is a brain chemical that induces calmness and good feelings, triggered by danger. Other dopamine triggers are food and sex. You know, you get the idea. I, I find it kind of depressing uh, that a researcher could look at my DNA and tell whether or not I'm going to take risks. Uh, there was other research in the article that I found a little more compelling. It, should, it said that the adrenal glands, uh, which are you know, somewhere around here on top of your kidneys, uh, secrete adrenaline when you're in peril. Adrenaline gives you a buzz, uh, you know, uh, not necessarily a positive buzz. A uh, little squirt of adrenaline and uh, you, know, you can react uh, like a meathead. Uh, however, uh, if, if uh, the subject in, in this particular experiment was warned about the stressful situation he was about to encounter, the, uh, the uh, uh, adrenals secrete noradrenaline, which can induce calmness and good, good feeling, sort of like dopamine. And it enables you to react more reasonably uh, to the perilous uh, situation. So 
my theory is that if you pay attention to Professor Bachenheimer and uh, read some great books about entrepreneurs like, like Beer School, uh, you'll be better able to handle the risky and uh, stressful situations that you'll encounter as, uh, encounter as an entrepreneur. Uh, obviously, I'm way over my head here with this scientific stuff. You know, I'd much be re I'd rather be telling you about the 750 milliliter cork finished uh, bottle conditioned beer that we're going to come out with in February called Brooklyn Local One. Uh, it's going to be a great product. Uh, you probably wonder how I got from the Middle East uh, uh, to making beer in Brooklyn. Well, while I was there, uh, I worked a little bit in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, where they have Islamic law. You can't buy alcoholic beverages. All the foreigners, and there are thousands of foreigners working in those countries, make their own beer at home. So uh, I got into making my own beer when I was over there. And then when I came home, I took a job with Newsday, which should have been a great job. I was doing the foreign news for them. We had about eight foreign correspondents uh, out in the field around the world. But it wasn't the same as being in the field, and I really missed the action. Uh, and I started reading about these small breweries out on the West Coast that uh, were being started by people from all different walks of life. You know, they didn't necessarily have German names, they didn't inherit the breweries, but uh, they had traveled in Europe and tasted what beer could taste like uh, in the great brewing nations of Europe and decided uh, we can make that kind of beer here in America. And uh, that's what we've done. Brooklyn Brewery is now number 32 among all breweries in the country. Anheuser-Busch being number one, of course, much, much larger uh, than us. Actually, much, much larger than all the other breweries. But uh, small breweries like mine are getting a serious uh, foothold uh, in America. We're in about 12 states. We're going to six more states in the coming year. And we sell in six foreign countries, including fairly significant sales in Northern Europe, in Scandinavia and uh, Britain. Uh, Tom Potter, my downstairs neighbor in Brooklyn, a, a former banker, a chemical bank, uh, uh, he and I started the company. We made a lot of pitches uh, at, the, at the beginning and uh, over the years, and we still make pitches. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, for me, the most amazing experience of uh, of starting a business and running a business is sitting down with a perfect stranger, telling your story, and having them write you a check. You know, in the very beginning, the checks were, well, as, as the dean said earlier, it's it's just a thrill. The checks were five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. But over the years, uh, I've gotten a few few of those uh, two million dollar checks, and uh, it's. Still a total uh, total thrill for me. Um, also, uh, the years in the Middle East, uh, sort of like that uh, experiment with the adrenal glands, uh, years in the Middle East, I think, did prepare me for a lot of the perils that I encountered uh, in Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn is sort of an unusual place to start a brewery. And actually, one of the things uh, our investors said at the very beginning was, a brewery in Brooklyn? What are you, nuts? What about the mob? I said, well, you know, I don't think anybody's going to bother us. But years later, we did actually uh, run into some uh, shady characters. At one point, I got robbed. I had a gun to my head. I had to open the safe and turn over $30,000. And, you know, uh, nobody's ever totally prepared for, some, for things like that. But uh, I think the experiences uh, that I had in the Middle East did uh, enable me to deal with them uh, with a little more equanimity than, than most people might have. Um, I, you know, I want to I wanna leave you with one thought. Uh, to, to me, there are really three reasons uh, for starting a business. Uh, and I think the first is, of course, to make money. Uh, your business is no good to you or anyone else if you don't make money. Secondly, for me, uh, it's to have fun. Uh, being able to say that you're happy to get up in the morning and go to work is a wonderful thing. And being your own boss is, is a great thing, too. Although, you know, sometimes you find that uh, being your own boss, uh, you've got the biggest uh, bastard uh, in the world uh, uh, bossing you around. Uh, you have to kind of learn to give yourself a little time. 
and, and not to be so hard on yourself. And you know, I think the third reason uh, is to do good, to do some good. I, you know, I'm very proud of Brooklyn Brewery's role in the, in the New York community. Every year we support uh, financially more than 150 arts and uh, not-for-profit not for organizations. Uh, we buy all of our electricity from a company uh, that has windmills in upstate New York. And uh, we encourage uh, our employees to get involved with organizations, civic organizations, and they do that. And uh, all of us are on one board or another. And to me, that is, uh, that's so, so important, you know? I feel that corporate America, their, their pursuit of short-term goals over the last few years have really brought shame to American business uh, in, in many ways. And I'm proud that Brooklyn Brewery does its part to reverse that damage. And I hope you'll do the same uh, when you start your businesses. Thank you.